Good day everyone and welcome back to SCP Illustrated, entry log 103. It's been a full month in the making but finally the first part of SCP-4217 is here. This is a two-parter SCP and the second part will be coming out in April. So today we're looking at SCP-4217, also known as Contain the Bismarck. This is a Keter class SCP and this video does contain strong violence, graphic mutation and blood. Now. I have done my research, however, I do apologise in advance if I do butcher any of the German words. Without further ado, let's begin. The following data release has been authorised by the following council members and administration staff. SCPS Saviour, Captain's Log, Event 4217, 22nd of January 2020. Captain Deceased, in lieu, Executive Officer promoted to Commanding Officer. Damage Report, uh, the SCPS Saviour afloat, minor damage to the bridge and startled freeboard. Captain Deceased, Deaths 6. SCPS Sword afloat, moderate damage to the bow, Deaths 15. SCPS Shield, ship sunk. Catastrophic damage to the stern, Captain deceased, deaths, 41. Event report, at 13.47 local time, SCP-4217 was detected on sonar, ascending from its last known position. SCP-4217 broke surface to the rear of the SCPS Shield and engaged, causing major damage to the stern. The SCPS sword engaged SCP-4217 while the Saviour moved within range. SCP-4217 continued to engage the shield while also engaging the sword and Saviour. At 13.55 local time, SCP-4217 was successfully suppressed, leading to the cessation of the occurrence. However, the SCPS shield sustained catastrophic damage and sunk at 14.01 local time. Of the ship's 195 crew, 154 were saved. At this time, the Sword and Saviour are awaiting relief from the SCPS Shadow Spirit Striker. Enlog, Commanding Officer. Description. SCP-4217 refers to both the Bismarck, henceforth 4217A, an anomalous German battleship sunk on the 27th of May 1941, and the large cephalopoid organism that is fused to the inside of its hull, henceforth 4217B. SCP-4217B possesses a pair of octopoid eyes, which protrude from the base of SCP-4217A superstructure and 12 100 to 200 meter long muscular hydrostats that extend from an opening in the stern. Aside from the presence of 4217B, 4217A shows no signs of damage sustained from battle or subsequent decades submerged underwater. SCP-4217B operates 4217A systems. This includes its full armament of 8 main guns, 44 secondary guns, and 12 anti-aircraft guns. SCP-4217-B also can operate 4217-A's propellers to reach speeds approaching 40 knots, but only while surfaced. While submerged, SCP-4217 achieves locomotion via ejection of water from 4217-B's body cavity, with an average speed of approximately 30 knots. SCP-4217 typically remains submerged at a depth of 500 to 1100 meters navigating its territory. However, SCP-4217 will periodically surface and enter a hostile state. During this period, SCP-4217 will seek and attack non-threatening targets, such as civilian cargo ships. If sufficiently damaged, it will revert to a passive state. Otherwise, it reverts after a median 9 hours. Special Containment Procedures Foundation Naval Forces are to patrol SCP-4217's territory with three or more battleships under the guise of the British Royal Navy. During a hostile state, 
naval forces are to engage SCP-4217 until it reverts to a passive state. Survivors from civilian vessels attacked by SCP-4217 are to be recovered and processed in accordance with maritime disinformation protocols. Addendum 1 – History The SCP-4217 designation previously referred only to the Bismarck itself, which was believed to have been neutralised in 1941. A previous version of this document can be found here. Description SCP-4217 is the Bismarck, a battleship designed and built for use by the German Kriegsmarine. Several pieces of anomalous technology were incorporated into the ship's design. Thermatological symbols etched into the outer hull at key locations to reinforce SCP-4217's belt armour. These symbols are not visible at most times, but while active, will luminesce in proportion to the amount of damage being mitigated. A weak psionic field with a radius exceeding 20 kilometres. The field appears to cause individuals with hostile intent towards SCP-4217 to experience confusion regarding the ship's identity increasing the likelihood of friendly fire when affected individuals mistake allied vessels for SCP-4217. Potential self-repair capabilities Damage sustained during the Battle of the Denmark Strait was observed in subsequent engagements to have partially repaired in a manner visually resembling the healing of wounds in organic tissue. Artillery shells containing an unknown gas with mutagenic properties. Organisms exposed to the compound will undergo rapid mutations. Observed mutations include growth or loss of limbs and sensory organs, development of fur, feathers and or scales, and in one unverified report, multiple victims being fused together into a single entity. A hypothesized anomalous power supply of an unknown possibly biological nature. During interrogation, surviving crew members stated that SCP-4217 required a unique type of fuel chemical analysis found the fuel to consist primarily of organic nutrients. None of the captive crew members reported having seen the interior of the engine room, although two claimed to have heard a sound resembling a heartbeat while in that region of the ship. This list is based on limited observations of SCP-4217 in combat and interrogations of the few surviving crew members and is thus not considered exhaustive. Efforts are ongoing to acquire the original design documentation. As of the 27th of May 1941, SCP-4217 is believed to be located at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean, approximately 500 to 600 kilometers off the coast of France. The Foundation currently lacks the technology to reach the wreck and verify its current condition, but the probability of SCP-4217 continuing to exhibit anomalous properties has been deemed low in light of the damage inflicted upon it prior to its sinking. Special Containment Procedures Information regarding SCP-4217's anomalous properties is to be suppressed according to standard protocols. The British Royal Navy has agreed to aid the Foundation in this effort. Foundation agents embedded in the German military will attempt to gain access to information regarding the Tirpitz in order to determine if it is a second instance of SCP-4217. Upon development of the necessary submersible technology, a survey is to be conducted of SCP-4217's wreckage in order to verify its neutralization. Timeline Marcus Straub, a Foundation agent working undercover in Germany, intercepts a shipment of esoteric materials being transported to the city of Hamburg for use in the construction of a battleship. Several materials are recognized as important components of thermatological constructs. Agent Straub is ordered to observe the construction. Upon completion of the hull, this ship is christened the Bismarck and launched for fitting out work. A large heavily guarded shipment marked with the insignia of the Obscura Corps is delivered to the Bismarck. Agent Straub reports hearing a sound similar to a heartbeat originating from the shipment, but is unable to get close enough to make further observations. Bismarck leaves Hamburg to begin sea trials. During what appears to be a high-speed run, the Bismarck releases a massive electrical discharge and shuts down. For several seconds following this, a series of glowing symbols are visible along the hull, 
but the distance is too great for Agent Strelk to identify them. Power is restored within an hour. SCP designation assigned. The O5 Council authorizes neutralization, and all agents stationed within Germany are ordered to rendezvous and destroy SCP-4217 before it can be completed. Agents report readiness to launch the mission. No further contact. The team is declared missing in action and the mission is deemed a failure. Subsequent attempts are hindered by the ongoing war. Following a 7-4-2 vote, the O5 Council concludes that the potential threat posed by SCP-4217 warrants informing the British government. SCP-4217 is spotted by Swedish reconnaissance aircraft. This information is leaked to the British, who contact the Foundation. The Royal Navy dispatches a fleet led by the HMS Hood and the HMS Prince of Wales to intercept SCP-4217. Foundation representatives meet with the British Admiralty Board to coordinate on neutralising SCP-4217. Foundation agents are placed on board select ships of the home fleet as advisors. The HMS Hood and HMS Prince of Wales engage SCP-4217 in the Battle of the Denmark Strait. Due to its sirenic field and thermatologically reinforced armour, SCP-4217 sustains only minor damage. SCP-4217 converts significant portion of the Hood's crew into SCP-4217-1 instances, which then overwhelm the bridge crew. The Hood is then sunk by enemy fire, while the Prince of Wales retreats. It is discovered that SCP-4217 is leaking a substance then thought to be oil, and the remaining fleet uses the trail to follow SCP-4217. SCP-4217's anomalous defences impede attempted attacks by torpedo bombers. Observing Foundation agents identify the defences and relay this information to Site-41. Use of SCP is proposed as a countermeasure to the psionic field, and preparations are made to transport it. Site-41 thermatology experts design plans to modify torpedoes that will overload SCP-4217's armour reinforcement. SCP-4217 temporarily breaks radar contact, but is eventually located by British intelligence. Events during this period do not deviate from historical record. Foundation supply ships arrive with requested countermeasures. SCP nullifies the psionic field. Modified torpedoes overload the reinforcement symbols and subsequent thermatological discharge causes moderate hull damage. SCP-4217 is noted to begin moving erratically. British warships led by the HMS Ark Royal surround SCP-4217 and begin firing upon it. SCP-4217 is now too damaged to return fire, but remains afloat. British bombardment continues. SCP-4217's store of mutagenic ammunition is struck, majority of crew is exposed and become SCP-4217-1 instances. The remaining crew abandon ship. SCP-4217 starts to sink, British ships cease fire and begin rescue efforts. SCP-4217 is completely submerged. Foundation teams recover SCP-4217-1 remains. Amnestics were administered to all British crew below the rank of Admiral before being allowed to disembark. 121 members of SCP-4217's crew were successfully rescued. Following interrogations, 109 were anesthetized and transferred to British custody, while the 12 remaining were sent to Site-23 for further investigation. The remains of 74 SCP-4217-1 instances were recovered and sent to Site-23 for study. An estimated minimum 1,500 members of SCP-4217's original crew remain unaccounted for. And that concludes part one of SCP-4217. Part two will be out in April. I hope you enjoyed this video and be sure to like and subscribe if you did. Next time we're visiting SCP-073 and this one will be illustrated by Sumin Chion. You may remember him from when he illustrated SCP-343 not too long ago for us. That one will be out next week.
Be sure to follow all the social media outlets for video updates, check out the SCP Illustrated shop for posters and prints, all the links can be found below. And if you can't wait that long and want even more exclusive content, then consider joining the Patreon for early video access, see all the sketches early, request your own sketches, get Discord access, and so much more. And thank you to Sam B, JT Walker, Rick Trexon, SCP-106A, Andre, Horizons, Andy98, Noah Perkins, Generals Alert, Hithel, and Tiger Shark. Big thanks to Chris, Steamy, Len Hox, Kibara, Hunter Killer, and Captain Core. And huge thanks to Azrael, SCP-682, Quill, Viger, Kamana, and Zanan. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all soon, and take care.